Good morning and welcome to worship at Spring Hill Presbyterian Church. Welcome one and all, whoever you are and wherever you are, as we join together in, yet again, a online worship experience. We invite you not just to watch this service, but to engage and to participate actively, both in uh, joining in the readings and, and in the singing where you are. If you're watching on either uh, YouTube or Facebook, you can make comments in the thread below the video. Let us know that you're here. Share any prayer concerns you might have. And uh, we certainly hope that if you've been joining us as a visitor through this time, that you will uh, let us know that you're here. Contact us if you have any questions about our congregation. would like to learn more about what it means to be a part of this learning and serving congregation that follows our servant Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of visitors, we're very blessed this morning to have Brett and Annette Heim as our guest musicians with us. You have heard already in the opening voluntary, uh, Brett on classical guitar and Annette on flute. Brett will also be our cantor today, and Annette will be playing the organ. And so we're so glad to have them uh, yet again. The Heim family has a, a great connection to our congregation. Whether you realize or not, you're used to hearing them and seeing them uh, each year on Cantata Sunday as they are part of the, the special guest musicians and at other special times as well. So we're very glad to have them with us this morning. Tonight, 7 o'clock p.m., this evening will be the next installment of our Sunday evening Vesper services. So remember, in the midst of all that we cannot do because of the coronavirus, having to stay away from one another, this is something that we safely can do to be together in each other's presence here at the church. So these are outdoor evening services that happen out in front of our fellowship hall and, and outside of the sanctuary and that sort of part of the church property. We ask that you bring your own chair or uh, blanket to sit on, that you, of course, wear a mask. There'll be hand sanitizer available and extra masks if you don't have one. Don't let that be a reason that keeps you from coming. We'll have a basket with them as well. Now, we do ask if you're in a high-risk category, uh, if you have had any symptoms uh, that would lead you to believe you might have the coronavirus, if you know you've been exposed to someone recently, uh, or if you have tested positive for the coronavirus. We ask that you wait until you are symptom free for at least two weeks or that you've had a, uh, a negative follow-up test as well. So with those parameters in mind and staying a safe distance apart, we're able to have these services and we're really excited tonight. We'll have Bill Oppenheimer again uh, as our musician on keyboard and our liturgy for tonight will be drawn from a Celtic evening worship service. So it'll be a wonderful time to be together. Again, as we did two weeks ago, our middle school and high school youth will stay after the Vesper service concludes to have a, a brief uh, time of youth group under the oak tree. Friends, with all that is going on in the world around us, with all that is swirling within us, let us now stop, pause, take Sabbath, and worship the living God. Please join me in our gathering prayer. Grant unto us, O God, the fullness of your promises. Where we have been weak, grant us your strength. Where we have been confused, grant us your guidance. Where we have been distraught, grant us your comfort. Where we have been dead, grant us your life. Apart from you, O Lord, we are nothing. In and with you, we can do all things. Amen. Let us join in singing, sing praise to God who reigns above. You will find this hymn and the other hymn for today printed in the bulletin, which you can access online. to God who reigns above the God of Oh, 
mighty part has made God's gracious mercy keepeth by morning glory, evening shade, God's watchful line sleepeth within the kingdom of God's might, law. All is just and all is right to God all praise and glory. The Lord is never far away, but through all grief distressing, an ever present help and stay, our peace and joy. My toilsome way along, I sing aloud thy praises, that all may hear the grateful song my voice unwearied raises. Be joyful in the Lord my heart, both soul and body. Take your part to God all praise and glory. Friends, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We say that often in response as the assurance of pardon in response to the prayer of confession, this reminder that God's grace comes not to people who are perfect, but to all of us who are sinners. God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness is prior to even our own action of repenting and confessing our sin. So too is God's grace the prior the first, the beginning of the whole life of Christian faith. We respond with lives of gratitude, of discipleship, of generosity, not to earn our way in, not to pay for God's gifts, but in grateful response for what God alone has already done for us. And so as we practice responsible and faithful stewardship, even and especially in this season of the coronavirus, I invite you to give to give generously, to give in ways that praise God for what God has already done in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You can make donations online using our online giving portal that you can access through the church website. You can mail checks, of course, into the church. We'll have an offering basket tonight at the Vesper service if you'd like to bring your offering to the church in person. In whatever way that you respond with your gifts, let us now stop and offer a prayer of dedication for the offering that will be received this week. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we give you thanks for your gifts that are fresh and new every morning. We pray that you would use these, our gifts, in service to your kingdom and to proclaim the good news of your gospel. In the name of Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. Praise Triune God whom we adore. Amen. Good morning.
morning, kids. This is a time in our service that we have set apart just for you, a children's message. But we'll let the grown-ups listen in if they would like. I want to tell you a story. A story about Martha. Now, Martha was someone who took very close and attentive care to all of her stuff. She knew where everything was in her house. Martha could tell you exactly where each book was because they were in alphabetical order. Martha could tell you exactly where uh, uh, every light bulb was that needed to be changed because she had them organized based on which lamps they went to. But one day, Martha had a problem. She was putting away her laundry and she found one sock, just one, which meant there was a missing sock. Where had the other sock gone? And of course, it wasn't just any sock. It was her favorite sock, Martha's nice knit wool socks that she would wear when it was cold outside to keep her feet warm. She loved this pair of socks more than any other socks, and she was missing one. Martha's missing sock. What was she going to do? Well, she called all of her family in and she said, we've got to find this sock. Everyone think back through your day. Well, Martha's husband, Dave, was the one who had done the laundry and folded everything. So she said, Dave, this must be your fault. Where's the sock? Did you forget to fold it? Is it hiding in the washing machine or the dryer? They went and looked and said, nope, it wasn't there. And then she thought, she remembered that her kids had taken the laundry basket and had turned it upside down to use it as part of a really, really awesome fort that they built in the living room because it was too wet to play outside. And so she thought, well, maybe when the kids were turning the laundry hamper over, maybe they misplaced the sock. And so she got them to go look. Nope, nope. She couldn't sleep at night. She was so worried about this missing sock. She woke up at midnight and... She went through all of her drawers, and Martha couldn't find her missing, wonderful sock. She thought and thought and thought, and then she thought, well, maybe it's somehow got stuck on someone's shoe and got tracked outside. So she went through her whole yard. She couldn't find it. The next morning, her family woke up, and you know what they found? Martha had taken all the furniture and moved it to other parts of the house so that she could look one at a time underneath the couch chairs and the TV and everything. They couldn't find it. Martha even unplugged and rolled out the refrigerator to see if maybe that missing sock was back there. Couldn't find it. She looked everywhere and could not find that missing sock. She was so, so sad. And while she was sitting and thinking about how sad she was that her sock had gone missing, you know what she noticed? She saw her dog walk up to the other sock that was just laying on the floor. And the dog sniffed it, and he picked it up in his mouth, and he trotted towards the door to go outside. She had an idea. She followed the dog, and he went to a bare spot of dirt in the ground, and he dug a hole put the sock in and buried it and then left like nothing had happened. Martha went out later with a shovel and dug in that hole and guess what she found? Both socks! Finally, she found her missing sock. And it was such a happy moment for her that she called her family and she said, cancel all your plans, everything else that you thought you were going to do. My sock was lost and now it's found we're having a party. We're having a huge, huge party to celebrate. Put on the best music. Wear your finest clothes. I'm going to get the best food and set the table. Everybody, y'all, get the finest china and polish up the silver. We're going to have a grand celebration because I found my missing beloved sock. The end. That's kind of a fun, but maybe a little silly story, isn't it? It sounds a lot like the stories that Jesus is going to tell us today in our Bible reading about a lost sheep and a lost coin 
and about people who will do anything in the world to go and find something that's lost because it matters to them. It's valued and loved. And I think Jesus tells us this story to remind us that that's how much God loves us. That God says every single one of you, every single one of us, are valued and loved, and God won't leave any of us lost and alone. That God will do anything, even send Jesus Christ to live and die and be raised again, to find us whenever we get lost. All right, so I hope that maybe today you'll think about something that's lost and maybe you could help others find it. Or maybe you could think about what a great and grand celebration God has because all of us get to be found together. Will you say a prayer with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you. Dear God, we thank you that you love us so, so much that you love us so, so much, that you come and find us no matter how lost we are, that you come and find us no matter how lost we are. Help us to show your amazing love to other people. Help us to show your amazing love to other people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we'll see you next week. This morning we continue our summer sermon series drawn from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes. We've been walking each week through this poem that holds together poetic pairings of different seasons in life. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. And today we consider a time to seek and a time to lose. With that image of seeking out what is lost, 
we turn now to the Gospel of Luke to hear Jesus tell a couple of parables. You'll note that what comes immediately after this story is, these two stories I should say, is the third parable in this set of three, which is the prodigal son. That was our text a few weeks ago as we talked about a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me! For I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ever since I was a kid, I've loved the stories of Sherlock Holmes. Certainly the original stories written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, but also the various adaptations of movies or, or new versions of the stories. Sherlock Holmes, you probably know, is this British uh, uh, detective who has a hyper-analytical mind and can find and search out any clue that's needed to solve a mystery for the right answer to be made clear. There's this famous phrase that Sherlock Holmes says to his assistant, Dr. Watson, when he started to piece together the puzzle in his mind, and he has to now go search for the clues. He looks at Dr. Watson and says, the game is afoot. The game is afoot. And then he begins with relentless pursuit, searching for the answers. The game is afoot. These parables today, the two out of the three we have, come, as you heard, from the Gospel of Luke, and they go together as a whole. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, or the prodigal son. And in typical Luke fashion, he balances the beginning, this pairing of one story of a male and another story of a female character. And while the third set of the group, the prodigal son, is far more famous, one that is represented in art and many other stories, we know it, we teach it to our children, the other two stories are a little bit different. They present something lost being found, but there's some details that matter. You see, the major difference between the prodigal son who goes off, realizes the error of his ways and returns, that's quite different than the sheep and the coin that do not find themselves. Now, these stories, the lost sheep and the lost coin, present a reversal of the typical way that we use language of seeking and searching and finding, especially in our religious thought. We talk about seek first, the kingdom of God. We talk about our search for God, our search for truth. One of the most influential books in the United States over the 20th century has been Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Usually when we talk about searching in these religious or or ethical senses, 
We are the subject doing the searching. God, or some other important ultimate good, is the object of the searching. We do the looking. We do the finding. But instead, these parables invite us to consider a very different way of searching. For it is God who does the searching. It is God's sacrificial searching for the one lost sheep, leaving the other 99, that evokes the biblical memory of the good shepherd who even sacrifices and is willing to lay down his own life for the life of his lost sheep. We see God's disruptive searching in the woman who is overturning everything in her household. Just as God overturns so much of the world's furniture of injustice and idolatry in search of us. And we see at the end of both God's radical celebration when we are found. The closing hymn that we will sing at the end of the service today may be a new one for many of us. It's called A Woman and a Coin, and it sings uh, each stanza, or the first three stanzas, sing the story of each of these three parables. But then they invite us to find ourselves in the story. In the first stanza, we sing, Am I the treasured coin worth searching for? And then, am I the treasured sheep worth dying for? And finally, am I the treasured child worth waiting for? Yes, God is the subject. God is the one who does the searching and the finding of what is treasured, valued, beloved by God. And we are the objects, like the sheep and the coin. We are the lost ones who are being found, not by our own actions, virtues, intentions, or intelligence, but by God's amazing grace, God's mysterious mercy, God's boundless love, God's surprising justice and righteousness. The witness of Scripture does not tell us about all these perfect people who go out searching for God with their well-crafted perfect questions or their most holy attitudes. No, Scripture tells us from the front lines the stories of those whom God sought out. The ones who were lost, but who God finds. Remember Noah lost in the midst of a world of violence and evil, who is found by God and called to preserve a remnant of creation. Remember Moses, the murderer on the run, who was lost in the desert of his loneliness and guilt, but was found by God at the burning bush and sent to save the Hebrews, who were themselves lost in the suffering of slavery. Remember the prophets who were lost in the midst of national discord and defeat, who were found by God, the word of the Lord that came rushing into their lives. Remember those smelly, oblivious fishermen lost in the monotony and the meaninglessness of life, who were found by Christ, called off their boats, and called to a radical new way of life. Remember those two disciples walking along the road to Emmaus, lost in their grief over the death of their Savior, executed three days prior on a cross. They were found, found by the risen Christ to have their eyes opened by the good news of the resurrection. Remember Saul, the great persecutor of the church, lost in his own self-righteousness and violent religiosity, who was found by Christ, found on the road to Damascus, 
found and given new eyes to see the truth of the gospel. Paul, who became the great defender of the faith. None of them were worthy. None of them were seeking for God in the right way. But God came to them. Amidst all their imperfections and brokenness, God found them and formed them. God saved them and sent them. The good news of the gospel is that God did not wait on humanity to get its searching pattern right, to find the right questions to go and find God. No, Scripture tells us, while we were yet sinners, while we were lost, lost in the reign of evil and death, God came and found us. God came to us. Not that we came to God. God came to us. God's very self poured into creation itself in the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again for us to find us. Right now, we are lost. We are lost like that sheep who's wandered away, like that coin hidden in a corner. We are lost in a world of suffering and fear as this terrible disease continues to kill around the globe. We are lost in a nation of division and discord, incivility, as competing camps with drastically different narratives and memories seek to gain more disciples for their side and attack anyone on the other. We are lost in our lives, lost in worry and confusion, confusion amidst all the rapid changes that this season has brought. We worry and we wonder, who am I? What's my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing? We are lost even in the church lost in separation, disconnected from the embodied physical presence of one another in our church family. In these days and in so many ways, we are lost. But the good news of the gospel is that even as we speak, God is seeking us out in Jesus Christ like the good shepherd who will not forsake or abandon a single lost sheep, like the persistent woman who will give nothing, get, get, who, will, who will not give up, who will overturn everything in search of the valued coin, God is searching for us in love and in grace. God will find us and restore us to right relationship. Friends, we have a God that seeks us out. And the game is afoot. To God alone be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Friends, will you join with me in prayer? Eternal God, we give you thanks that you seek us out when we are lost. That you come to us in Jesus Christ, forgiving our sins and ushering in your kingdom. We eagerly await its fulfillment and the rule of Christ to be complete. But even as we wait and hope, we know that your kingdom is not yet fully here. There is so much that keeps us lost. And so we pray this day for all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who are sick and struggling, especially with the coronavirus. We pray for those who are facing death and those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are separated from the ones they love and those who are unable to be at home. For those who are far from home as well, serving in our military around the world. 
Oh God, we pray for those who have no homes this day, who feel abandoned by the world, ignored by the church, for those who face hunger and homelessness each day. We pray for those who live in lands affected by natural disasters, devastated by war and oppression. By your Spirit, O God, seek us out and find us in your love. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors and the needs of the world. Empower us to respond to your love with gratitude overflowing, that we may share the life and love of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing A Woman and a Coin, which is printed in the online bulletin. as those who have been found by the God who seeks us out. Let us join together in affirming what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the good news of the gospel is that we who were lost have been found. We have been turned around back home. That's the literal meaning of the word repent, to be turned around. We who were lost have been found. And so let us go out into the world seeking out others whom the world has abandoned, whom the world has just checked off as lost, part of the flock that doesn't matter anymore, part of the treasured coins that can be lost without too much devaluing. No, no, in the goodness of God's grace and love, we are called to participate in God's seeking and finding and celebrating together. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all this day and all days. Amen.